what it is that we should write in the examination if gap junctions is asked so as to get maximum marks out of this question that is what we are going to understand in this video first of all divide your answer into three parts the first part should be describing the gap junction structure the second part should be the functions of the gap junctions and it's always good to add the clinical importance or the applied aspects of the gap junctions. So let's begin with the structure. So the first point that we are going to write here is that gap junction is a type of intercellular connection. The other intercellular connections being desmosomes, hemidesmosomes, tight junctions, etc. So what does the gap junction do? The gap junction, it is going to reduce the gap between two cells, okay? Usually, as here we can see, this is the cell membrane of one cell and this is the cell membrane of another cell. The gap between the two cells is roughly 20 nanometers. Now, because of the gap junctions, these are the gap junctions, what has happened to the distance between the two cells? It has reduced to 3 to 3.5 nanometer. So very, very important point that we should write in the exams is that, the gap junctions is going to reduce the gap between the two cells from 20 nanometers to 3 nanometers. So that's the major function of the gap junction. Now, what is it which is going to reduce the gap? So this space is narrowed by units which are called as connexons. These units, what we are seeing here, these are the one which are called as the connexons. So this is the enlarged diagram of the connexons. If possible, you can draw this diagram also. Each connexon is made out of six protein subunits. What are these protein subunits? See, this is the structure of the connexon. This is one subunit. This is the second. This is the third. This is the fourth. This is the fifth and this is the sixth. So there are six subunits and these subunits are called as connexins. These are called as the connexins. So these connexons, they form the channels between the two cells. Okay, like this is one cell and this is another cell. And these are the one which are going to form channels between the two cells. Here you can see there is a gap here in between the connexons. So these are the one which are going to form the channels. Next, let's understand the functions. So these channels, are you able to see this? So this is the channel which is formed here. So these channels, which are having a diameter of roughly two nanometers, okay, having a diameter of two nanometers, they permit the passages of substance without the substance entering into the extracellular fluid. See, this is the space which is present between the two cells. Here we are having the extracellular fluid. So if the substance is entering through these channels which are formed due to these connexons, then the substance is not passing into the extracellular fluid. So first function is that they permit the passage of substances without entering into extracellular fluid. The substances could be sugars and amino acids. Second is that they help in rapid propagation of electrical impulse from one cell to another cell hence they form what is called as electric synapse there is one more type of synapse which is called as a chemical synapse wherein the electrical impulse from one cell to another cell is passing by other neurotransmitters third and very important point is that these gap junctions they are abundantly present in the heart that is in the myocytes in the myocardium so what do they help they help in quick passage of the electrical impulse because of this the heart is going to contract as a functional syncytium that is because of the quick passage of the electrical impulses from one myocyte to another myocyte the entire myocardium is going to contract as a one single unit without any delay between the cells that is what is called as functional syncytium and the last function is that they also help in exchange of the chemical messengers so four functions permit the passage of substances without the substances entering into the extracellular fluid help in rapid propagation of the electrical impulses that is called as electrical synapse they are abundantly present in the heart muscle hence it helps the heart contract as a functional syncytium and they also help in exchange of the chemical messenger now coming to the clinical importance of this these connexons they are coded by at least 20 different types of genes and if there is any mutation of these genes that results in diseases so one such disease is what is called as charcot marie tooth disease which is caused because of uh, the mutation of a particular gene and what happens here is there is a peripheral neuropathy. So what did we learn? We learned that we are supposed to break down the answer into three divisions. The first will be the structure wherein we should write that the gap between the cells is reduced and we should write regarding these things which are called as connexons. Next is the function and the last is the clinical importance. Thank you for listening.